Welcome everybody to the Monday, September 18th meeting of the Conway Select Board at 6.30 p.m. Call the meeting to order. This meeting is being video recorded um, by FCAT on YouTube shortly. Um, and first of all, this is a special meeting. Uh, normally this time of year we're meeting every other week, but um, when we saw these applications come in, we know that there's a desire to get people working. Um, so we scheduled a meeting that we would not otherwise do for your benefit, Tim. Um, for, for, yeah, for everybody. <laughs> for the benefit. town's For the town's, be town's benefit as well. But um, yes, that was on the chair's own, that was the chair's own idea. I didn't That's even need to be pushed into this. Correct. Yes, yes. Well, thank um, you. Yes. yes thank uh, you. <laughs> so, um, we'll, uh, the first item on the agenda is unfinished business, but we'll just skip right ahead to new business. The first is discuss and vote to hire Brandon Iavecchia as a part-time police officer. It's good to see you here, Brandon. This is your chance to introduce yourself to the town. Is there anything you want to uh, tell us? I'm, I'm excited to work for the town. I've worked with uh, the chief here in Waitley uh, for a couple of years, and uh, I hope to be able to be a benefit for him here in his new role as chief of police. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I, I'd just like to say that I think it's really um, wonderful of our new chief to be finding new people in this day and age when it's very difficult to find new recruits. So, very appreciative of both of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah, where is it that you live? You live in Connecticut? Okay. okay, so it's a long trip. I, I, I work, well, work full-time um, for Western New England University mm -hmm. uh, for their police department. Uh, and then I work part-time for the town of Whiteley, which is where I uh, right. met Chief Bates. Um, and then when I was driving up here, I noted the time difference was only like, uh, about 12 minutes oh, between yeah. here and there. Uh, so it wasn't much further to drive, but uh, to be able to continue working with the Chief here, uh, great honor. Driving all that way to work with our chief. Yeah. All right. Speaks a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, and I, I'm not going to rely on him as an emergency mm -hmm. aspect, so that's why I don't need him as close as, like, Christina's close, and I've got my cable that's close, Randy Williams that are close, and they can all hurry up, and if he's around and can make his way up, that's fine too, but I just... I need somebody that's willing to work on a weekend, mm -hmm. and him and I have had lengthy conversations about what I expect out of him and what he expects out of me, and weekends are pretty much what fits in his schedule Wonderful, for the most right? part. So you know, I'd like to get some weekend coverage out there. Like I said, you guys hired me to do a job, provide a service to the town, and I'm trying to provide that best service to the town without costing any more money mm -hmm. than I have to. So. And it's not costing any more to put Brandon on based on the budget that Kenny Womet worked for me and in moving into this. So, wonderful. That would be a good benefit. Hopefully, with his ambition, we'll, uh, we'll get some cars slowed down, especially through the center of town. It's one of my projects. So, everybody out there in the center of town or in the town, start watching your speed limit. Yeah. If he gets appointed, <laughs> you may meet Brandon. <laughs> All right. Yeah, feel free to park in front of my house, and uh, <laughs> it, that's a convenient halfway point in the middle of town. <laughs> yeah, yeah. there's a lot of good spots. You sit anywhere; it's a good spot. Right? Yeah, but if you sit at my house, I'll give you coffee too. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and and the other thing is just you know by way of just starting out in the town, I would once in a while stop in at Baker's, have a cup of coffee there, introduce yourself. That's sort of one of the. Yeah, during our field, I'm going to put him through a field training Great. program. Granted, he is, it's going to be a pretty abbreviated field yeah. training program because yeah. he's not new. Yeah. But he is new to Conway, so I gotta, it's going to be probably three or four ride-alongs that he'll come up and he'll do with me and just to get him acclimated to the town, where things are in town, places to go on weekends, and mm -hmm. just to get him introduced to the townspeople. Wonderful. Wonderful. It's really good news. And... Um, Really happy to meet you. Happy that you're here. Nice to meet you. Hope, you, hope, you, hope we have a long and mutually beneficial relationship. And um, feel free to move to Conway whenever you want. Um, <laughs> and make a go of it, for real. Um, 
So any, anything else? All right, um, I'll move to hire Brandon Ivecchia as part-time police officer. Second motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Well, thank you guys. <laughs> yeah, no, fantastic. Fantastic. Good, good, good. Um, Can I have his application back? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have excellent handwriting. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I know you wrote it, you guys would understand a thing. <laughs> That's his secretary. Travel secretary. <laughs> I need one of those. <laughs> I guess I'll have to just settle with a 19-year-old dog. Um, next, discuss um, and hire Jason Batwell as equipment operator slash laborer. You got slash next to your name. <laughs> um, so again, Jason, is your chance to introduce yourself to the town? What would you like to tell everybody about yourself? Yeah. I'm Jason Batwell. I am uh, applying to the position of laborer slash driver. Um, <coughs> I'm looking forward to the opportunity to uh, work for the town and on the highway department. Um, I've got my CDL license. Um, I've been a laborer for, you know, years and uh, I think I would be a great fit for a crew and looking forward to uh, being able to work for the town if possible. Wonderful. I see Ron nodding his head approvingly, mm -hmm. especially with the great fit part. I saw that. I saw that. That's good. Um, and anybody have any, have any questions? No, we, we had an interview earlier, and yeah. I was very impressed. And I'd be very pleased to have Jason join us. Yeah, I see you have some carpentry skills that might come in hand <laughs> <laughs> for a few things I can think of. Actually, I thought your resume was really impressive, and um, I think I think the town will be putting all of your skills to use yeah. in short order. Um, and yeah, and especially now, I mean, as you know, the uh, recovery from the July storms is ongoing, and um, I think that department is really short-handed, and it's a good, it's a good, it's a good thing. It's, the timing is good. And um, yeah, yeah. Now's really when we need you. So <laughs> glad you're here. Yep. Same here. It's good timing. Then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds so. like they want you to start tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> no, we do actually. <laughs> Sounds like Chris Watson to build a porch for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could use a so new soffit in the corner of my porch too. But, uh, yeah. I can't walk with them. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Um, yeah, that was a joke. I don't expect him to do that. That's, that's, that's not how we work. Um, well, I'll make a motion to um, vote to hire Jason Botwell as the equipment operator for the highway department. It's equipment operator slash. You forgot the slash. Oh, is there a slash? Yeah, there's a slash. Not slash. on the yeah, I know. business. It's not on the business, it's not, but it's, it's, not it's on the it agenda, is. Sorry, but it is. A, it is a slash. It's not labor. Labor. Equipment operator slash labor. That's uh, what we're. That is what. Okay, I said. <laughs> <laughs> I make that motion. Uh, I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous and uh, well done, Jason. Well, labor. <laughs> and the same to you. I hope we all have a long and mutually beneficial relationship. And um, welcome. Look forward to seeing you around. Thank you. Both of you. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Yeah. You yeah. don't have to stay for the other board and stuff if you don't want to. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome to always stay. You always come to any of these meetings. Okay. Um, you don't have to encourage me. What's that? Thank you. 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 Thank you.
want to get just a quick update on up front? Yeah, actually, yes. Um, town infrastructure. It's in the it's in the old business. Yeah, <laughs> talk about town bit, oh, infrastructure. So we have an infrastructure project that looks like it's been marked out, although it has not been before the select board. So okay, well that. this is new to me about that kind of thing because I've never had to before with building new grounds. So if things change, somebody's got to tell me that things change, how I do my department stuff. Um, yeah. Sorry, I didn't, I mean, I've, in the past, I just do what, but I, I'm, yeah. I'm not opposed to it, I just, it, I just, I didn't understand that that changed. Well, it may not have changed. It may have been on me. I just thought it was good to share with the public, so that they, you know, and the select board, what the plans are for in front of town hall. Well, That's the way that what came about is that box right there yeah. needs to be put out there, and there was an issue with where the board is on the building, right. access to it. Yep. So I made a plan to put that so that it would work for Lori and move the board next to that where the posts are out there. But also we did, I was trying to take advantage of uh, an employee that is good with stonework. Right, right. And for, we also have somebody that wants, wanted to donate some money to, for making a better, sign placement because it kind of that sign got donated to the town but it kind of just got thrown there on a little wimpy post yeah no, and, it was and so all in favor of that so i came up with i talked with randy and we came up with a plan with doing a little short stone wall um around the front of the along the sidewalk there around the corner and then at the end we were going to put a sign post out then that sign on and then I do a walkway into the bench that's out there when we, for Judy doing a little walkway into it so it kind of because right now you really can't access it the way the chain link fence is there and stuff yeah it's not just that the chain link is is every single year at Festival of the Hills somebody I see somebody trip and fall over mm -hmm. that thing um, we will still leave a short section along the sidewalk going up the hill but of the chain I think there's three posts that will get up there but um the, the, the only thing that when I when I heard about this I just thought you know it's one guy with the, the stone even though it's a short stone wall it's still a stone wall and is there enough hours that he has to do it before festival well um that's why I haven't done anything with it I was yeah, I had to mark it out so I could see what everything was there and also because I know Lori was concerned about her box and where that was going to be there and stuff. Um, so the plan is right now, it's not getting done before the festival, um, but the box, we got to pour a cement pad for this under the sign and for that box. That's getting, moved. we're moving along with that. Yeah. Because she needs that's that. That's got deadlines for, for oh, the elections right. coming up and all Correct. that. Yeah. So I figured we'd get that part. Obviously, I, we wasn't going to do anything before the festival on the wall. All right. Because I don't want to tear up and have a big Yeah, you wouldn't want to start, start it before right. and not be able yeah, to finish it. And the way the weather's been, <laughs> right. you yeah. can't count on being able to work on the hours, mm -hmm. you know, the days that he's here. Yeah. So, yes, it would be after the festival. It might not even be until next year. You know, it's just something that I'm trying to plan for. Yeah. I think, I mean, it sounds like a beautiful layout to me, and one of the things that I don't think you just mentioned is that it's going to be more handicapped accessible, both the ballot box and the posting board, you'd be able to get to from a wheelchair if you needed to, to be able to see everything. So that's like going to be a huge improvement. In well, I think just being able to walk up to the sign yeah. without, even if, because I know it got mentioned before about doing a walkway to where it is now, and I just personally think that 
I always liked it on the other building. Right. You know, because you walk in the building, it was right there. It was easy. Um, I think it really does need to be something really easy to get to. Yeah, is there a light on in that sign so that people can see it at night? No. Like, on which like, sign? No, like no. Town Office Bulletin Board has a spotlight on it on night. Well, it does because there's one in the front of the building. Right. Yeah, it doesn't really light up the sign. I mean, Should inside be, it. But I always no. thought. You mean putting a light on this yeah. one? Yeah. Well, I don't know if we could throw a solar light on it at some point. Yeah, you could do that. You know. I don't know how many people drive up in the dark at night to check out our board. It's not, it's not even that, too, though. It's just as a general security thing. Like yeah. We don't really have it. I always thought it's a well, little there bit. There isn't one where it is now. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, this will be a huge improvement. I think. It's going to look so much nicer. Yeah. It's going to be so much easier for residents. And yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. I think um, it's always nice to have private residents donate money. Um, and uh, the town will gratefully accept all donations. I'm not sure what his donation is or how much it is. I, I know it won't cover the whole project, but. Yeah, but whatever. whatever. We do want to make sure we get a very nice thank you note from Good Stationery, <laughs> signed by hand and everything, like proper, like. Um, well, Ron will let me know when that comes in. All right. Because right. it's got to run through Jam, too. All right, and um, yeah, so there's no, I mean, I guess we do usually vote on something like that. We have in the past, and uses, change of use of town property or anything like that. I, I, I don't know. I just thought it was good to let everybody know yeah. what was happening because people are seeing things marked out and, you know, just to at least at a public meeting say this is what the plan is. Yeah. And so, I mean, just in case, I'll move to uh, endorse the plan for um, putting the pad, the concrete pad and um, in place for the uh, ballot drop box and um, um, as well as changing the location of the sign in front of town hall as, as well as swapping out parts of the iron post and chain link with a short or a low, low-ish stone wall. I think those are all good ideas. So word for word, I want to see that <laughs> motion. And I'll second it. I already did. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Well done. Well done. And then since since you're here, Ron, and we have it on as um, regular uh, item every week, just to talk about the town, how we're managing the damage from the flood. Do you have an update? Like, where, where are you Actually, going? I do have... Um, Good. <laughs> Good. Well, I don't have numbers, but I do have a request for uh, two roads that I w would like to reclaim and pave this before winter. Just because they're in such bad shape, I'm pretty sure we're going to have a lot of trouble plowing, and they took so much damage from being washed out. So we got Main Poland Road from the covered bridge to the Burt residence, which is up past Adams Road. So that's like over a mile. Nope. You've got to do something. I don't. I. I don't know what else to do because the road is so bad that if we don't reclaim it, we're just wasting our money on it. Same with Pine Hill, this end of Pine Hill. I'm sorry, what do you mean by reclaim? They come in and grind the block top up, regrade it. Okay. And then pave over the top of it. And um, Mass Dot isn't doing, they, they don't do pavement for us. Was it Mass Dot going to have on the moment? Oh, they have. Different the end of it. Yeah, that's right? yeah, the other end. The, other end, the other end that was really bad. Yeah. You know, big holes. Yeah. That kind of thing. They're still working out there. Um, uh, so, Main Poland Road to reclaim and pave, we're looking at $120,000. And Pine Hill, we're looking at 88000 But just so you know what, uh, I don't have the numbers from what we spent so far, but I believe 
You might have them, Barony, for the um, emergency a, funds. About 140,000. That, that, was the, that was the first thing. And then no, it was 110 the first time, and then it was 35, maybe 145,000. I thought 35 was the last. I think it's more than that. Yeah. Maybe. I think it was like 210. Really? Yeah, and then you get the overtime there that also is not on the warrant, but it comes out of the. Right, and we did see that as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, we got a long ways to go, money wise. Yeah. And we're trying to do our best to not, you know, wipe everybody out. Yeah, Travel so has been the biggest. For, like just from from my point of view, spending in deficit in general, which and I understand you have to, everybody has to be able to get to their homes. Um, and uh, you have to be able to that. So that means you have to be able to plow in the winter. So that means you have to get roads ready to be able to plow in the winter. Um, at the same time, if the state doesn't come through with the supplemental appropriation in time and we have to borrow um, I don't even want to like <laughs> um, you know if we're talking about seven figure borrowing and um, what that's going to do for the town finances we're not going to be able to do like anything else so and I you know, I, there's one thing what I'm being told by our state legislative delegation, and then there's another thing just based on the bitter experience that we've had so far with other state agencies, um, seem, seeming to hold out the potential for help and then just have it just be pulled away from us. Um, I, you know, I at this point, I don't trust I just don't trust what we're being told, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful, but um, well, the problem and, I have is our time crunch. You know, winter's coming. I don't. I mean, I suppose we could just reclaim it and leave them dirt, and deal with the ice problems that we have with dirt roads. I mean, that's typically why the Pine Hills paved is because of the steepness of it and. No, I know, and I'm, you know, I, I, I walk my dog up there, and so does Chris. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the flip side of that is it's really one home, it's two homes, one in particular. Um, There's actually and, three homes up there. Yeah. The people. But one, mean, one, yeah, but. Well, there's two that full time. Yeah, I know. Right. Maybe we could, Ron, you and I, revisit the damage assessment based on what DOT has done for us so far. Well, can't you add this into the damage assessment also? Well, there's no point at this point unless... What do you mean add in? The extra 208000 it would take to... Add it to what? The damage assessment. The IDA, the IDA no, for FEMA. Oh, it was in there. This was? Oh, those two were... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so you're just coming to say... Uh, okay. Yeah, because I you... need to know whether I can tell them to, to schedule it. Gotcha. Because we're probably, we're talking the end of October right now, right. as far as their time frame goes. And well, Jan had said that we had, I believe she said, up to eight hundred thousand in cash that we can take from, to, and we don't have to repay it until June thirtieth. So, if we're let's say we're at three hundred thousand right now, you're talking five hundred thousand. So, I guess the next question is, how much more do we have coming after that? That them too. That is our probably our biggest expense that I can see that we that would need to be done. We probably, I'm pre I'm pretty confident that we can make things work for under the eight hundred thousand. I mean, but it's the gravel that is now going to be. It's been our biggest expense all along. That and the culvert pipes, but I'm pretty sure we're all set with what we need for culvert pipes now. So basically, it's just the gravel and some blacktop that we'll be doing ourselves, you know, on the edges of the roads and stuff. 
but and it is it is true that there is that is the amount of money that is theoretically available um, before we would have to borrow. But that is not just money that is extra right. or is sitting around. Oh, no. That is the money that funds all of government that would therefore be unavailable for all of government. Um, no, but actually, I think that's stabilization funds right. and such. That's not no, it's, it's mm -hmm. not a f yeah. It's not something that will affect uh, operating. No, no. It's yeah, stabilization. No. Yeah. It's money that's in stabilization accounts that she has. She can borrow from the stabilization right. for the year. For the year, up until June 30th, but it has and to be replaced by June 30th. Somehow, either that gets transferred to that fund, to the emergency fund, out of them stabilizations, or the town mm -hmm. votes to put the money, find the money somewhere else, either from that so station or borrow. So the best case so scenario borrow. is that the town receives money from the state before we have to put the stabilization funds back in then we don't have to borrow if we get the money from the state. So if, you know, that wonderful best case comes true that we, you know, it's on the governor's desk by Thanksgiving and we get the money in, say, January, then we'd be fine. Um, so let me understand, if we have to borrow from the stabilization fund, you have to replenish what you borrowed by June 30th, or another vote has to happen to put more money into the stabilization fund? Oh, no, transfer it. The transfer. transfer out of stabilization yeah. to the emergency fund. Okay. I mean, it could happen that way. Mm -hmm. But typically, that you probably wouldn't want to take your stabilization. You'd want to do a borrowing. Or yeah, you'd, yeah, you'd want to borrow to replenish because you still want your stabilization funds right. to have what they had in them. It's, yeah. just, it's just a temporary fix to get us through. Right, so there's money to be spent yeah. through this process. And that... There could be a perception, you know, normally to take money from stabilization requires a two-thirds vote. Mm -hmm. So um, this could be perceived by some as an end around that, although we are authorized to spend in deficit because from the storm. So this right. this is how that, it, it, it it's is. All a, it is a, it's all on the up and up, it's all. It's all on the up and up, but it is at the same, it is all the up and up, and we have to do these things so that people can get access to their homes. Um, but at the same time, it is, the whole concept is anti-democratic, if you want to look at it that way. It's just... Um, and, and then we're on a timeline, if we need to borrow from it, the timeline to try to get funds or grants or whatever from the state. Yeah, so one way or the other, the monies have to be replenished by June 30th. There's, there's nothing wrong with doing this, and I don't think all of it's actually stabilization. Some may be in something else. It's yeah. whatever cash accounts that Jan is able to temporarily borrow from. But the end result is that the monies have to get replaced. So either it's gonna be money from the state or we're gonna have to borrow, that's what it comes down to. So it's not that we're taking it away from stabilization because it'll be there to spend by next town meeting. I mean, really, it should be, so. Do hmm? uh, I'm, I'm just with you, I'm worrying yeah. about trusting the state to not but what, ta help, what, but town meeting, what town meeting is going to want to do, though, is just not spend it. Rather than vote to borrow money to replenish it, they're going to vote to not spend it. Exactly. Um, I, I think so, too. Yeah. <laughs> to, what do you mean, not spend it? To not replenish it, to yeah. just not, you know, whatever, to not replenish it so that we can we spend it. We have things. to. We have no choice. Okay. The only reason she's able to borrow from them funds is for the deficit fund. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So that deficit fund, no matter how you look at it, that needs to get repaid. Mm -hmm. How that happens, there can be several different ways that that can get repaid. Okay. Depending on how the town wants to make that happen. And that typically is done on the warrant. You know, the warrant says how that money is going to be on whether it's borrowing or, I mean, because we do have stabilization funds that don't need, they can be used for other things other than that stabilization by vote of town meeting. Correct, yes, all of the stabilization funds can be used for any purpose that's voted by town meeting. Correct.
I'm not saying that that's what needs to do. I'm just. I know. I know. You know so but I'm kind of in a hard spot here because I I don't have money, right. and I don't want to just go and do something without. Yeah, I mean, said that I can't. We're all in a, the, the, the town is in a hard spot. Correct. You know, in a very very hard spot. And um, and more, the highway department is doing everything it can to save this town from big expenses. It's and Mass DOT has been a big, big help. Yeah, they have, they've been the one, the one help, no doubt. The one agency that has showed up for us. And uh, above and beyond the call. Um, and I guess, you know, like the... <laughs> I remind everybody that Hurricane Irene was 2011. We received our appropriate, we received the funds from this state supplemental appropriation in 2017 or 2018 <laughs> 2017 i think it was so i you know uh, you know <laughs> meanwhile they already did a supplemental appropriation for the farmers mm -hmm. and i just don't understand why right the that rest is of us. frustrating and then you see leminster the, the rain doesn't even stop and they already declare a disaster before they did any paperwork, any IDA, anything. They got their disaster declaration and MEMA's all there helping. And well, just so you know, MEMA doesn't have any money. Yes, they yes. They, they get... They only get... They only help you get federal money. Yes. And they got that really fast. Well, that's because the governor declared a state of emergency for Leminster. And did she for us? No, because the MEMA director um, refused to ask for it. So, Pine Hill, three homes, two full-time. I'm just asking, hypothetical. There's two ways to get to Pine Hill from either side, right? Yeah, because you can, if you don't go to the back part of the Oh, the center order. part is not a maintained road. Okay. Okay. Then that answers my question. Never mind. You need a you need a four, <laughs> you need a four wheel drive truck even in the best of times, yeah. really. Um, unless you're borrowing somebody else's car. Then maybe <laughs> so so, so just so I'm aware. So so you come in Pine <laughs> Hill this <laughs> way. <laughs> so Pine Hill's open on this side and on this side. It's open in the middle. On both yeah. Ends. yeah. Okay. Where the farms and stuff. Are. Well, it's the one no, rundown for him. And that's where the, our maintenance stops, is that? But you know, the, the, who put up the road close sign uh, next to four, year, four years when the road doesn't close for another mile? Well, it's the same on it's, Poland. It's because people are getting stuck in there, and the farmer down the other end was not happy with people banging on his door because he has a tractor out there. Because I always thought, you know, it, or the sign already says road closed. To well, through traffic. Let's clear clear traffic. Yeah, let's close the road. I mean, that's what I always thought. Let's make the sign come true. Um, what are you going to tell the residents? Uh, it's on you. Okay, you can tell them that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, the... Because the, when somebody just spends millions of dollars redoing their property, and you're going to tell them that the... Town's not going to maintain the road to their house and they pay taxes. Donations would be acceptable, though. <laughs> Donations would be acceptable. Well, maybe you should bang on his door and ask him. That's a good idea, actually. I have, a, you could, have you ever heard of a common driveway? Yeah, thank you. Brilliant. That's a. All no, right, you know, well, I. Like, the, the, <laughs> so, any I mean, other roads can I come up with that you. Well, that's, that's the thing. You know, one, one, of the, one of the lessons of all of this is. How much it costs to to maintain every single foot of every road that we have, and how many roads do we have that serve just one or two homes or three? And what? And why is that? And can we do anything about that? And how do you get rid of roads? That's not on me, I, I, <laughs> and I'm not even going to even try to <laughs> figure that one out. I mean, when I'm somebody else to wants to tell me that I don't have to maintain a road because you got to go to town meeting to discontinued use of a road. 
I'm, I'm trying to get rid of the street lights, and Phil's like, I got, I'm going to one up you on this. <laughs> well, that, yeah, the street lights are a whole nother thing. That when, you know, so we really took a good look at what the Eversource is billing us for street lights. About eight hundred dollars, seven to six to eight hundred dollars, depending on the time of year, a month. Yeah. Um, what? For, are, I'm sorry, we're no, jumping around. What, what What do you need from us on the on the Pine Hill and Main Poland? To say that it's okay to have the contractor schedule it. Um, do you want to bring Eric in, or no? I, I, I mean, it, it, if we don't schedule it, the road is going to de deteriorate even more. Well, and by the time you plow, you're going to be plowing the okay. road, the actual road. Yes. I, I don't see a choice. Personally, I don't see a choice, but I wanted to make sure you were aware of, you know, before I made that decision. Um, is that a boat? Is I don't. I don't so, so the to the total for both those roads is what? Two hundred eight thousand. Mm -hmm. You said one twenty and eighty eight. Yep, one twenty and eighty eight. So yeah, two ten, two twenty. Right? And then and what were we looking at for the North Poland boat bridge? That one to repair the bridge. Yeah. That's hopefully going to be under twenty thousand. Okay. And, and that's just out of my operating. Room. That thought, wasn't storm damage. I think that was a lot more. Okay. Originally they were talking forty to fifty thousand, but the engineer found a different way to do what they needed to do. So, but we don't know because it's such a small thing when it goes out to bid that might might be a shocker. But uh, that's being planned to come out of my operating budget. To repair that bridge. No, I mean the main Poland is a school bus route, and um, you can't have buses sliding off roads mm -hmm. and all that. Um, we can, but we and let's have. not forget our mail carriers. Yeah, the Pine, Pine Hill is hard for me to say yes to. It's because mm -hmm. that's just such a. It would be better off just paying people to move or something, but um, uh, financially speaking. But I, you know. I don't think so. Yeah. And somebody just put the money they put in their that's house true. and asked them to buy them out. I don't think so. I don't know. Um, what would you do with the land? Move town offices up? Yeah. It's a beautiful view. It would be a nice view. They wouldn't be able to get there because we ain't going to fix the road. <laughs> 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 All right, that was good. Um, so is that a vote, and then All right. for the vote, do we say to a max of, or is it just open? It's going to be open. Yeah. It, they're pretty, the estimates are usually pretty damn close. I mean, it depends on, because they're not digging to find anything that's yeah. going to mess up. It's all they're, basically, all they're doing is they're going to, Come in and grind the blacktop, and then repave two and a half inch binder on it, and then probably a few years down the road we'll have to do a chip seal on top to seal the binder. But I mean, the, on the on the one hand, when we did when we did vote to authorize deficit spending, it was uh, with prior approval, mm -hmm. and and this is prior. To doing it, this is prior. This is a request for prior approval, which is mm -hmm. the desired process. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for that, and um, yeah, I'll make a motion to um, yeah, pay do do the paving project as outlined by um, our highway boss on Pine Hill Road and. Main Poland um, to grind up the current pavement and get it put down so that you can plow the road without ripping up the torn up pavement. Mm -hmm. Main Poland from the covered bridge just to pa just past Adams. Yeah, okay. to the bird. To the no, we're not doing the existing dirt section yeah. here. But got it. Mm -hmm. 
What's there now for blacktop is what we're doing. Got it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. And uh, with the fondest hope that we can really stick close to the 208 and total. Um, and, you know, hopefully the new, the, new, um, the new employee will also help with reducing, you know, overtime costs and, right? And well, we got a lot of work to do before winter gets here, so, yeah. unfortunately. And the other thing is, he's never really driven truck before, so it's a, he's got his license, he just got his license. We're looking for somebody. Yeah. So, but I, I'm pretty sure that from interviewing him that I think we're on the right, right road here to. Yeah, I did talk to somebody that he worked with at a prior place of employment. Um, they, they said he's a good guy. Yeah. So, um, it's all gonna be good, I hope. Yeah, no, I. Um, we got 90 days to figure that out. Right. If I am, if I could, Erica had asked, um, and it doesn't have to be right now, but for an, an update on Bardwell's Ferry, just because a lot of residents have been asking about that. So I don't know if you have any new information um, that we can just share with the public so they know the latest on. Well, uh, we've been in contact with an engineer, and he's supposed to be give, doing. Um, giving us a ballpark figure for what it would cost to fix. From what Mass DOT is saying is we're not going to be able to afford it. So we'll have to be on their dime just because of the cost of it. And just so everybody knows that them beams are weathered steel beams, which means that they're not supposed to be in a wet location. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately with the wooden deck, and the river down underneath kind of puts them in a weathered, I mean, a wet location. And they're fine until they start having decay. And then they almost like blow up. That's why it happened so fast. That the rust, once the rust starts, it just literally just spreads like wildfire. And that's what happened. That's why two years ago when they did the inspection, there was not no issue. Yeah, that, that, I heard about that. I was like, how can they go from no issue and a good inspection report to needs, needs to um, be replaced? Asking that same question. And that's what I got told. And good. they're not quite sure why them beams got, were spec for the bridge there. Um, one of the things that I heard was that it was um, far enough away from the water so it shouldn't have been an issue for the moisture. For a bridge over a river. Like, but the biggest problem, I guess, is because of the wood planks. They hold moisture. Mm -hmm. So it never really And have cracks in between the wood planks for... <coughs> That's what I'm being told. I don't... I'm not an engineer. But MassDOT did the specs for that. Yes. That bridge was replaced in 1995. Not replaced. The bridge deck. But I believe them beams were put in in 1995, the ones that are the reason the bridge is shut. And the recent inspection, the Shelburne side, still came out with no problem. Everything, the bridge itself <coughs> is not an issue. It's the approach to the bridge on the Conway side, because there's about a I don't know, what is it, 25, 30 feet approach before the bridge actually starts. And you said they want to encase that in concrete? Oh no, different bridge. Okay. Bridal Ferry Bridge. Because the Shelburne side is actually like a foot or two lower to the water, but uh, to the river oh, than the Conway side, that's what I was told. I don't believe so, the bridge is pretty flat going across. If there is a pitch of that much going across, I think you'd know it. I'm pretty sure the bridge is level, the decking. But it's not the bridge itself. It's yeah. the Conway, because Conway doesn't own the bridge. Thomas Shelburne does. We own the approach. Mm. Lucky and us. The other thing about that that I, I hear from, I, I heard from people in Shelburne and in Conway that 
just a few years ago, the trees were on both sides were cut back enough so that you could see approaching traffic or whether somebody was on the bridge. And within a few years, yes, both... It's, both it's that way everywhere. It's not just there. I mean, it's everywhere. So yeah, the, that, the weather really has caused trees to... to just, Shelburne needs to cut... Like it's just because right the the way it was before, right before it closed, you had to just like get almost on almost that bridge on before bridge. you could see whether there was another car there, and then backups were a little bit sketchy for some people. Um, yeah, well, that can be even on a normal world. <laughs> yeah. So, geez. Um, yes. Uh, if it ain't, if it ain't, I think it's another. Well, there's all kinds of things. Good all night. Yeah. Speaking of bridges, let's move on. That was clever. That was cute. That was cute. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, Ron. Thank Ron. you, Ron. And, uh, yeah. All right. Good. Thank you. Um, so, we have a item for not, not a couple items for not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Um, one was uh, Jen Warner. Our, our excellent treasurer tax collector. Um, we neglected to appoint her to her position for this year and we're doing annual appointments. So that was missed. And uh, we just like to rectify that clerical error. Um, I'll make a motion to appoint Jan, Janice Warner as treasurer tax collector for a term of July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2024. And the, uh, I second that and with the note that that is backdated at the beginning of her term. Um, and of course, she's been working for us for much longer than since July 1st, 2023, but we're just doing annual appointments. So I second it and uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye, it is unanimous. Um, next item is, uh, so this is a bit unusual. This is also something that just came in in the mail like today, or maybe it was this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah this weekend. Um, and so it's about uh, a late submission for a Scott for the Germain Scholarship reimbursement, and um, really the name of the person is not significant for this discussion and um, I'd rather not reveal it is public record if people are that interested you can come into town hall and ask to see who the person is who the family is but the, the situation is um, the way that this the, the germane scholarships work is um, everybody that is approved for it gets a letter from the select board in the name uh, signed by the town administrator, um, setting forth the guidelines, how you how, how the process to get reimbursed that that it's um, the scholarship is tuition reimbursement, and um, we and it's done one semester at a time, or one half of a school year at a time, um, and there are deadlines, and um, the. The, the funds must be used within one academic year. They cannot be carried over from one academic year to the next. A, a, amounts not billed, this is the important part, I'll read this sentence directly. Amounts not billed or otherwise claimed will not be paid and will lapse as of August 31st of the next year. So, um, August 31st has come and gone, and we have um, we have a request for reimbursement of a semester where it's postmarked September 13th, 2023. So <clears throat> this is a question about what is the meaning of deadlines and do we make an exception, although one is not specifically requested, in order for us to say yes, that would be making an exception to the deadline. And um, the concern is that if we make an exception, or one concern that has been expressed to me, is that if we make an exception to one applicant for this reason, 
are we then obligated to make <coughs> an exception for all similarly situated applicants? Um, and in the first, so um, I do look and I see that um, it doesn't appear that there is any uh, other similarly situated applicant for the second term this of the school year. There was one for, there was one that, one um, <coughs> that was never received for the first semester, but they did receive funding for the second semester, so we can only assume that there was no attendance during the first semester. Um, Those are simply the ones right. that were due, could have, and did not. Could have So, I mean, the, 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 the one applicant who never submitted for the first semester, so that would now be something like, well, you know, eight months late. Mm -hmm. Here we're talking about two weeks late. Um, and every other applicant submitted the paperwork back in for, for the second semester um, back in February and March. Um, so, um, you know, what are your thoughts on this matter, Chris? <laughs> uh, well, like you said, deadlines are deadlines, but it's I'd be uh, hypocritical for saying that when I've been so furious about uh, um, our state not helping us with uh, FEMA because of their strict boundaries on um, the loss of, of uh, how much uh, revenue, or not revenue, capital it would take to repair everything. So, two weeks isn't that bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, to be fair, the state just applied that to our town. They didn't apply that. You know, Leminster got their disaster declaration without filing any paperwork. Right. At all. It just happened when I, while it was still raining. So um, I think that given the circumstances and the amount of applicants that we can give a pass this time, but I, I don't want to set a precedent either. Yeah, I mean, one of the, you know, in going over and seeing the drafted letter that we send to everybody, um, maybe what would be good, at, what, I, what I would like is a, is a sentence added to it saying failure to adhere to these deadlines, or these deadlines will be strictly observed, failure to adhere to these deadlines will result in no lack of reimbursement, you know, in a lack of reimbursement, no reimbursement. Accept the late entry of the Germain scholarship being, uh, applicant, and so that would pay the pay the amount of reimburse the amount of reimbursement is eight hundred and seventy five dollars. Yes. <coughs> and uh, yeah. And so moved. All right. I'll second it. And uh, I think the person's career choice and what they're going to school for. They're going to find the deadlines are much more strictly adhered to in their <laughs> given profession than what Conway is choosing to do. Hopefully they'll remember fondly their dear old hometown. Um, no lingotty in the law. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's not. So there was Unless you're Leminster, <laughs> then you get lingotty. Um, so that was all in favor? Yeah, that all is favor. all in favor and it is unanimous. Aye. And, uh, yeah. So, I'm going to push that so they can sign it real quick. Oh, okay. Sign Dan's. He just wants to sign that. Okay. 
And then while we're signing that, I can go back to unfinished business. Um, sure. Just the last portion of it says, assist private individuals and nonprofits in remediating damages and obtain compensation for losses to private residents and property. Probably should be stricken because we cannot yeah. assist private individuals. Right, that's what that, I was wondering. That's not exactly true. There are state and federal agencies that can, and we can help to facilitate that. My concern is putting it on the agenda in that language is, a, is almost making a promise that I'm not sure we can fulfill. I don't think anybody expects town cash assistance to private And obtain residents. compensation for losses to private. Uh, help to obtain. Oh well, yeah, that's what I, <coughs> Yeah. Um, I agree with you. I have, I have trouble with that word. That's why we just changed it, so now you're happy. We Is that did? just one? Oh, yeah, that's okay. What did we change it to? <laughs> help to. We added the words help to. I still don't know how to do that. And so. Well, for instance, the um, last week, um, the USDA E. Emergency Watershed Protection Service of the USDA Conservation Bureau. Um, engineer Xavier and Engineer Tim came out here um, and uh, we toured numerous sites. Um, they expressed a hope um, that one of, that they will be working on one site that benefits the town and uh, the the, uh, the, uh, the we also toured the whole Pine Hill Upper Baptist Hill Road River Street drainage area and that is a good example that's a federal agency that has it within their remit to protect life limb and private property mm -hmm. and there are state agencies and other federal agencies and private foundations that all do that and that the town should be doing whatever we can to assist those residents through those agencies and entities um, and it's completely separate from cash assistance or spending town deficit money um, to make residents whole, but what the town can and should be doing is whatever it can to get those agencies and entities to help whoever they can, whatever they can. And, um, and so they, it, they ended up, they take a look at it and um, basically their particular remit is limited to actual emergencies. So if it actually was flooding when they were here, in the way that it was flooding when they were not here, they might have been able to do something. But because when they toured the place, there was no imminent danger to any households or uh, whatever, they, they, that program will not be able to act, but they are referring us to other programs that may be able to act. Um, and they are also um, um, in discussions with them about engineers that could, for relatively low amounts of money, come up with um, a stormwater management plan for that whole slope um, that then we would, you know, that wouldn't deal with funding, that that particular federal agency wouldn't be doing funding for it, but it's a start. It, we would have a plan, and with a plan, we could then choose to do some funding, some, to try to get some funding. I mean, um, so, but, uh, because basically what it, the way it was explained to me is that there are several things that could be done at relatively low cost, like with, by low cost, I mean, one guy with one excavator um, doing really useful things with like just a couple of days work. So, um, and specifically on Upper, ba Upper Baptist Hill Road where the tree line coming down from Pine Hill is all across a swale, the whole length of it, connecting with the swale and the drainage in front of Forcier. Mm -hmm with some modifications to be to next to four years so that that water would run off into the canyon next to Emerson Hollow. Um, 
as and then also um, a ditch just similar to you know, on Upper Baptist Hill Road, the side of the road that is on the Pine Hill side. Um, if a ditch were to be created, even if it's an earthen ditch, similar to what the state just put on the sides of 116, mm -hmm. that could carry water from, that's coming down, that could carry, because there already is a natural slope, that whole road that could carry water into that swale, that is, in, I mean, into that swale and ditch in front of force here again with the same, to carry the water in that same direction. And then um, the way it was outlined to me in the whole land area be between the, the houses of, uh, on Upper Baptist Hill Road and the houses on River Street, there could be some, just with, again, with a guy, a tech guy or a gal or whoever, a human being driving a tack, uh, uh, an excavator, could just do um, a couple of terraces, earthen terraces, that would cause the water to gather, and then it would, when it would reach, it would drip down, and then it go to the next terrace. Is this all on private property? It would all be on private property, but all of those private property owners are super keen on doing something. So, um, well, we know that's better Exactly. So, like, the, I don't want to just give up on any of this stuff because we shouldn't. Like, we know this is going to happen again. And nobody's home deserves to just be declared, eh, you're on your own. Well, well, might not be inhabitable in a few years, but, you know, so that, that can't be our attitude. We have to just try. That's my point. And yes, I am one of those homeowners, but <laughs> I would say the same thing for any of my friends and neighbors. And we all should. Okay. So, um, you disagree. I, <laughs> You're looking at me with disapproval. No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> so we're, okay. Not, we're not doing updates, right? No TA no, updates. No, no, no. No comments. No. Yeah, the idea was that this was going to be a very brief meeting. Yes. Yeah. We kept, we kept it to an hour, hour, but that's pretty good. I guess that's, that's, that's not too bad. Brief. Because Ron was talking all the time. Yeah, yeah, Ron. <laughs> Sounds so similar to you. All right. Um, so with that, our our next meeting, which would have been our next meeting, is regularly scheduled for September twenty fifth in this room at six p.m. and it does promise to be a significant agenda again. <sighs> such as such as. Life in September after a giant dead life flood. And, uh, so with that, motion to adjourn till September 25th, 6 p.m. in this room. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.